Shadow work is what it's called. That's when you pump your own gas. You assemble your own furniture. You book your own travel. You see, in past years, other people used to do that for pay. Now we do it ourselves for free. Craig Lambert has written an interesting book that's titled Shadow Work, The Unpaid, Unseen Jobs That Fill Your Day. These efforts, while technically free, eat up a lot of our time. Shadow work includes things like those extra jobs you get assigned at the office while they're still downsizing the staff. It's checking yourself out at the grocery store, even though the cashier can probably do it a lot faster than you can. It's consulting the medical, your medical problems on the internet and trying to cure yourself with over-the-counter medicines before you go to a doctor. It's the hours that you spend trying to coordinate all your kids' extracurricular activities. Over the past decades, as technology has taken off, our cram schedules just become more and more filled. Sure, some experts say that this DIY approach is empowering, but we never think about are the consequences of all this shadow work, this self-service. Shadow work not only makes us busier, but according to Lambert, it also makes us isolated and exhausted because we're always interacting with screens rather than with other humans. Sure, you don't have to, to uh, subscribe to the, uh, this alarmist position of Lambert to understand the point he's trying to make. You live it. But before you can rebalance your life, you have to understand where you're spending your time. I read a recent uh, Harvard Business Review article that asked the question, are you proud of how you spend your time? It urges us to not succumb to the tyranny of the urgent. Stop doing what is, seems to be urgent and concentrate more on what is important. Because what is urgent is seldom important and what is important is seldom urgent. There's a difference between urgent and important. Like answering your email or messages or checking Facebook or Instagramming your friends is not as important as attending your child's soccer game, as meeting your neighbors, as eating your meal with the family, not distracted by electronics. The Apostle Paul had a similar concern which is why he wrote to the Corinthians about the gifts of the Spirit. He wrote them to, so that they would be cognizant of how they're spending their time, how they're living their life. He wants them to be aware and not let the Spirit work be overtaken by the shadow work that's in their lives. You see... One of the dangers of shadow work is that it can kind of scoot spirit work to the side. St. Paul says, Now concerning gifts of the Spirit, or spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ig um, ignorant or uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or the other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. It's amazing, isn't it, how the truths of Scripture, the truths of the Bible can leap the centuries and speak to us where we're at today because we are still influenced and led astray, not so much by Greco-Roman gods, but by the modern gods of fame and fortune, money, possessions, and the like. It is this quest to be successful and our name known and fame that oftentimes drives our 
desire to do shadow work, which seems urgent, but leaves us and doesn't serve the common good. Shadow work usually serves the self. Paul wants to clarify what it means to live by the Spirit. He says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Notice, <coughs> excuse me, that Paul is not saying that the Spirit is limited to a certain kind of gift or service or activity. No, there are a variety of gifts of services, of activities. What unites them in this distinctive kind of work is that it all comes from the same source. And what is that source? Now to each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You see, the same source is the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And... Here comes the important part. It serves the common good. When we can grasp that, we've moved from shadow to spirit. So what is spirit work? That's a tricky thing for us Lutherans to talk about because we know that good works are not absolutely necessary for our salvation. God has done it all in Jesus Christ. And yet at the same time, St. Paul says that works are necessary for salvation because they are the fruit, the natural fruit of the regenerate person's life. He doesn't mix... Um, he doesn't uh, beat around the bush or do mental gymnastics when it comes to doing good works. He sees good works as a natural part of the believer's life and properly places the origin of those good works in the same place that our salvation comes from, in the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says in, this, in our text that no one, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, and to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. A New Testament commentator um, looked at this and says that the, the message of wisdom talks about ethical matters, where the message of knowledge talks about theological matters. Ethics may, deals with what we do while theology deals with what we believe. Both doing and believing are important work, and together they serve the common good. The theologian Johnny Cash, and I'm being a bit facetious there, in one of his songs, though, he mentioned this, this idea when he says that people ought to be, not be so heavenly-minded that they're no earthly good. You see, ethical actions need to support our theological beliefs. And our theological beliefs then govern our actions, our deeds. Otherwise, people will rightly call us hypocrites. We cannot just say we love our neighbors. We must do actions that actually love others. We cannot say that we believe in forgiveness. We must believe, forgive those who hurt us. We cannot just talk about justice. We must do justice. People are not impressed by knowledge. In fact, a lot of people are turned off by those who feel that they have all the answers. So St. Paul in our text commends a balance of acting in an ethical way to support our faith and faith that acts in an ethical way as well. There's real, solid, down-to-earth wisdom. Such wisdom is grounded in concrete actions, 
so that people experience the love of God. So spirit work then is not simply work you do for the church or in the church. Spirit work is what you do in your daily life, in your career, in your vocation, in your job. Spirit work is fulfilling that divine calling that God has given you to serve your neighbor however he has gifted you. Spirit work um, assures people that God is real. Through simple actions, it shows people that God is present in the lives of his people. Spirit work serves the common good. So within the church, though, God has given some the gifts of healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another uh, various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. This list describes a variety of gifts, of tools in a believer's toolbox. The skills range from healing to praying to listening to comforting to encouraging to helping. The point is, is that not one of these gifts is superior over the other gifts and that none of us have all these gifts to ourselves. That's why St. Paul uses the body, the human body, as a metaphor for the church. Unless we have all our body parts, we're not completely whole and fully functioning. All the gifts are needed in the body of Christ. Otherwise, the body suffers when one part, a person, refuses to employ their gifts. Sometimes people denigrate the gift that they have because they don't feel that that gift is important as others. But remember, just because something is not urgent doesn't mean that it is not important. We often place a higher value on those things that seem to be urgent, but then discover that they really weren't important in the end. So don't get drawn into the tyranny of the urgent. Most often, the things that are important take time. They take spirit work. I asked a group one time to describe their purpose in life, trying to get them to think about their uh, vocation and the individual gifts that God has given to them. And one lady whose name was Kim, not of this congregation, said, my purpose is simply to be the person who can pick up the phone and give you 30 minutes in your time of crisis. I can listen to you complain about your coworkers. I can meet you in the parking lot, look you in the eye and tell you the truth. I can give you a boost when you need to stay afloat. That's spirit work. That could fit into Paul's category of healing, of discerning the spirits, maybe even working miracles. It serves to build up the body of Christ. It serves the common good. Our challenge is to push aside those things that seem to crowd out, um, crowd out our, uh, our lives, that shadow work that keeps us, our lives from being defined by spirit work. We can begin by turning off those screens and turning to one another. It's only when we talk with one another and engage in real conversation that we can show each other the love of God. This might not seem important 
It's not urgent work, but it is most important. It's important because that's how the good news is made incarnate today. In our mutual conversations, in our mutual support and care for one another. You know the season of Epiphany is all about God becoming flesh in Jesus for the salvation of the whole world. God revealing to this world that he has become flesh and blood to serve us by saving us. He serves the common good by restoring the relationship with our created God through grace and forgiveness. This epistle is a part of this epiphany readings because it tells us how the good news is made incarnate among us today. It's about spirit work. The spirit working through you as you then make others, as you then share and serve others for Jesus' sake. Spirit work energizes us. It connects us to one another. Instead of feeling isolation and exhaustion, we begin to experience inspiration, community, and unity. Think about that. Energy, com uh, connection, inspiration, Community, unity, those are the benefits of replacing shadow work with spirit work. Following St. Paul, moving from the shadow to the spirit, from earthly things to heavenly things, from the urgent to the important. Because when we do that together, we feel ourselves closer to God, closer to Jesus, closer to one another, and better able to serve the common good. And that, my friends, is time well spent.